So just to you know, do a couple more. And actually, you'll see very quickly that the examples I take in lecture are pretty much always the same ones. So, you know, uh, we'll be playing a lot with these particular vector fields just because they are good examples. So let's say I give you xi plus yj. So that one has an interesting geometric signification, uh, significance. If I take a point xy, you know, so there I want to take the vector xy. How do I do that? Well, it's the same as the vector from the origin to this point. So I take this vector and I copy it so that it starts at my given point. Okay, so it looks like that. And you know, same thing at every point. Oops. So it's a vector field that's pointing radially away from the origin and its magnitude increases with distance from the origin. Okay, so you don't have to draw, you know, as many as me. Uh, but so the idea is this vector field everywhere points away from the origin and its magnitude is equal to the distance from the origin. So, you know, if these were, for example, velocity fields, well, that would tell you, you know, you'd see visually what's happening to your fluid. Like here, maybe you have a source at the origin that's spewing fluid out and it's flowing all the way away from that. Okay, let's do just a last one. Let's say I give you minus y comma x. What does that look like? That's an interesting one, actually. It's a nice one. So let's see. So let's say that I have a point x, y here. Okay, so this vector here is x, comma, y, but the vector I want is negative y, comma, x. So what does that look like compared to? Yeah, it's perpendicular to the position to this vector. Okay, if I rotate this vector, so let me maybe draw a picture on the side. If I take the vector x, y, then the vector with components negative y and x is going to be like this. It's the vector that I get by rotating by 90 degrees counterclockwise. And of course, I don't want to put that vector at the origin. I want to put it at the point x, y. So in fact, what I will draw is something like this. Okay, and similarly here, it would be like that, like that. And if I'm closer to the origin, then it looks a bit the same, but it's shorter. And at the origin, it's zero. And when I'm further away, it becomes even larger. So see, this vector field, if it was the motion of a fluid, it would correspond to a fluid that's just going around the origin in circles, rotating at uniform speed. Okay. So this is actually the velocity field for uniform rotation and if you figure out you know how long does it take for a piece a particle of fluid to go all the way around well that will be actually 2 pi because the length of a circle is 2 pi times the radius so that's actually at unit ang angular velocity one radian per second or per unit time so that's why this guy comes up quite a lot in real life. Okay, and you know, you can imagine lots of variations on these. 
of course, you can also imagine vector fields given by much more complicated formulas, and then you'll have a hard time drawing them. So maybe you'll use a computer, or maybe you'll just give up and just do whatever calculation you have to do without trying to visualize a vector field. But if you have a nice, simple one, then it's worth doing it, because sometimes it will give you insight about what we're going to compute next. OK, any questions first about these pictures? No? OK. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry? Y and, uh, you're asking if it should be Y and, uh, so Y comma negative X, I think would be the <coughs> other way around. See, for example, if I, if I'm at this point, then Y is positive and X is zero. So if I take Y negative X, I guess a positive first component and zero for the second one. So Y comma negative X would be a rotation at unit speed in the opposite direction, okay? So yeah, and there's a lot of tweaks you can do to it. But, so if you flip the signs, you get rotation in the other direction. Uh, yes? How do I know? Uh, how do I know that it's at unit angular velocity? Well, that's because if my angular velocity is one, then that means that the speed, the actual speed, is equal to the distance from the origin, right? Because the length uh, I mean, the arc length on a circle of a certain radius is equal to the radius times the angle. So if the angle varies at rate one, then I travel at speed equal to the radius, and that's what I do here. The length of this vector is equal to the distance from the origin. I mean, it's not obvious in the picture, but really the vector that I put here is the same as this vector rotated, so it has the same length. So that's why the angular velocity is one. It doesn't really matter much anyway, but. Okay. So now what are we going to do with vector fields? Well, we're going to do a lot of things, but uh, let's, you know, let's start somewhere. So one thing you might want to do with a vector field is, so I'm going to think for now of the situation where we have a force, okay? So if you have a force exerted on a particle and that particle moves on some trajectory, then probably you've seen in physics that the work done by the force corresponds to the force dot product with the, the displacement vector, how much you have moved your particle. And of course, if you do just a you know, straight line trajectory, or if the force is constant, that works well. But if you're moving on a complicated trajectory and the force keeps changing, then actually you want to integrate that over time. So, okay, so we're going to, the first thing we'll do is learn how to compute the work done by a vector field. 